Welcome to the Lipis Report. Hi everyone, I'm Nick Lippis and I'm here at Ixia's iSim City and this is our test week. Uh, this week we're testing IBM's basically their, their rack switch series of switches and we have three of them and I'm here with like Dan Tuckler who's going to be talking to me about these three new IBM rack switch switches. So we did both the G8124E, uh, we also did the second one which is the G8264 and then also the third one is the G uh, 8316. So we're going to talk about each one of those and then talk about design options that you have with them. So Dan, why don't you say a quick hello and um, tell everyone what you do over at IBM. Nick, I'm in charge of product management for the system networking group at IBM. Thank you for inviting me here. It's really a pleasure to work with you on testing our new switches. Great, excellent, great Dan. Well, let's, uh, we're going to go from like top to bottom uh, and talking about each one of these. So why don't we start here with the um, 8124E. 8124E has 24 ports of 10 gigabit ethernet. Uh, but what really sets this switch apart is it has extremely low latency. We have a certain category of customers for whom latency is everything. Uh, this includes financial traders, high frequency traders on Wall Street, stock exchanges who want to get the stock information to their customers as fast as they can, and also small work group clusters. For those customers where 24 ports of 10 gig is enough, and they really care about latency, this is the best product for them. Yeah, and actually we, uh, we tested uh, the previous version of this, which was the um, 8124. So like the E is the new version, and the new latency is about 13% faster. So we're about, about 500 nanoseconds of latency, which is really just like right there at industry standards. So uh, congratulations on that. Thank you very much, and we appreciate your support in testing and, and, and verifying uh, what our product can do. Great, excellent. So let's go to the, uh, the next one. So the 8264 and its companion, which is the 8316, let's talk about those for a few seconds. This is really uh, what I consider the state of the art for wiring up enterprise class data centers. As you know, IBM has a large part in wiring uh, rooms full of thousands or tens of thousands of servers. And what they really need is connectivity to make applications connect to each other very seamlessly. What we've seen in the past few years is a dramatic shift from north-south traffic where traffic used to go from the servers out to the web or out to the customer or desktops. And now it's a lot of east-west traffic, a lot of servers interchanging information with other servers, and they need that broad bandwidth and also low latency to connect to each other. So what we've seen a lot of customers do is put an 8264 at the top of a rack. It has 48 ports of 10 gig to connect to all the servers in the rack. Now what you see here is a lot of uh, beautiful fiber optic cable, and that works perfectly well. What we see a lot of our customers do to save money is use direct attached cables, which are copper versions which will plug into the same ports and provide connections up to eight meters so you can connect from the top of the rack easily to all the servers in the rack with copper and save a lot of money and not really require fiber optic. But the fiber optics are there if you need them. Great, excellent. So that's 48 ports facing down, but you also have to face up to other racks and also out to the, to the broader network. For that, we have four ports of 40 gig here. You can see they're also connected with fiber optic cables. They can be also just as easily connected with copper cables. Okay. And so that's 160 gigs of uplink capability. Very good, excellent. And uh, actually I want to make uh, a quick note. Also the fan is reversible. So uh, if you're independent about where your hot aisle and cold aisle are, you can switch the fan flow, uh, which is really convenient um, in any kind of data center setting. And that's this, this turns out to be, well, this is something that since we started making products for IBM and since we started uh, making these copper rack switches, it's one of the first things we did is made them in versions that can support either front to back or back to front airflow so that as the architect is designing a data center, they can make sure all the airflow is going in the same direction. And this is just, you know, now it's, it's expected to put together a data center network you don't want the air to flow the opposite direction of the servers. It would create all kinds of problems. So all of the products have that option for uh, airflow to match what you want in your rack. Great. And um, also the, uh, the 8264, we actually tested a previous version of it back in December of 2010. So this is an updated version. It's a lot faster. It's about 700 nanoseconds of latency is what we've been able to measure. Also a faster processor as well. So uh, you guys did 
great job improving this product, you know, and we've been able to verify the testing with it as well. Thank you. It's, re it's really great to hear that kind of feedback. And uh, it's, it's great to be able to talk to customers about this product and get their feedback as well that this really fits what they're trying to do to build out the data center. But the next question is, I have four 40 gig links. Right. How am I going to connect them? And what we found is, is a great match for that is the uh, 8316, which has 16 ports of 40 gigabit. Yeah. So what we do with this is create what some people call a spine layer, other people call an aggregation layer, and that gives you the ability to connect a lot of these 8264 racks together so that you have this, this switch at the top of every rack and you have a few of these centrally located and you create a mesh, you get a huge amount of bandwidth east, east to west and low latency because it's just going through a couple of hops. So this is the way we see a lot of our leading customers, uh, they're trending now strongly toward this kind of architecture. Uh, the prior architecture was by a big box that could house firewalls and intrusion detection and uh, application delivery controllers and all kinds of things in the box and it cost a lot of money, took a lot of space. What we're finding is this is a lot more optimized for connect connectivity and moving data. Yeah. So this combination of fixed port boxes in one new form factor turns out to be a lot more cost effective and power effective and space efficient than the, the old modular box approach. Yeah, and actually this is the first time we've ever tested a 16 port 40 gigabit uh, product, and, and it's very different from anything else we've, uh, we've had in the lab before. In essence, I kind of view it as like a top of rack aggregation uh, device, because you can have a lot of these uh, 62, um, 64s, I'm sorry, 8264 uh, at the top of rack, and those 40 gigs come down into like now the 8316. So you can create, without having these big core switches, you can have a series of these horizontally split, mesh together to provide that really low latency, east-west, north-south kind of traffic flows. It's the way, you know, when we talk to customers on Wall Street, when we talk to some of the leading web 2.0 companies, it's the way they're architecting their networks now. They need massive bandwidth, they need low latency, and they also need a roadmap, 10 gig, 40 gig, 100 gig. So this is where things are right now. Uh, I should mention with any one of these 40 gig ports, we have the ability to break them out and create four 10 gig ports instead. So you have a lot of flexibility in what you can connect to. You could pick a few of these ports and connect some odd 10 gig uh, devices to them if you needed to. But if you're, you're in a pure 40 gig environment, you can really maximize the efficiency connecting these products together. Okay, great. So um, based upon the testing numbers that we've seen so far, these are all best in class products. So, um, and they're very competitive in the marketplace but let's talk a little bit about the software, which is really the value add and what really delivers a lot of the value within a data center. So you guys have been really, I think, industry leading around virtualization support uh, within these products. So let's talk a little bit about some of the software features and the kind of designs that they lend. Absolutely. So, well, to start with, the switch has to have rock solid layer two and layer three protocol support for the whole variety of protocols that you need in a data center these days. On top of that, you're absolutely right, we pioneered the support of virtual machine movement throughout the data center. Uh, we originally released our product VM Ready back in early 2008, and it was the first product on the market that could recognize virtual machine traffic and allow the network to adapt to it. And that's tremendously important because as our customers, the people putting together the networks, as all these virtual machines are rolling into their data centers and all the traffic now on, on a single port instead of a single application on one OS, on one port, now you might have 10 applications on 10 OSs right. coming into one port and you still have to debug it and keep it running. And so we gave them the tools to recognize the separate virtual machine traffic. And we've been building on that to support virtual machine mobility throughout the network. Now IBM has been a leader in creating a new set of standards uh, collectively called 802.1 QBG, right. which is a standardized way of supporting virtual machine movement in the data center. And we are the first to release 802.1 QBG enabled products. Uh, just recently across these platforms. So we continue, uh, we believe, to, to push the envelope on how we can support virtualization in the network. Great, excellent. Yeah, so I know you guys are really kind of staked out. I kind of view um, like three areas. One, it's that, you know, um, top of class, you know, layer two, layer three performance, top of rack, and now a top of rack aggregation uh, product. You've done great around the virtualization software piece. And then uh, a little bit looking out is that you have the OpenFlow and SDN um, 
architecture, these products are looking towards kind of an SDM future as well. Absolutely, and the 8264 was the first 10 gigabit OpenFlow enabled product in the market and we've had great success with it. Uh, you know, it's early days for OpenFlow and for software defined networking, but there's tremendous interest. Every customer is asking us what our, what our view is and where we think things are going and they're all trying to figure out how does software defined networking and OpenFlow figure into their future. Um, we have a number of projects underway uh, to create software defined networks, overlays across the network, uh, to continue this evolution uh, to enable clouds, to enable infrastructure as a service by allowing the, the network to be smarter. Now, if you think about it, IBM, we're providing servers, storage, networking, applications, middleware. We have a great position in the, in the industry to define how an application can control the network. And that's where we think the real value is. As the applications become smarter about the connectivity in the network and can rewire the network to accommodate how the application is changing, um, it's hard to imagine all the things that our customers are going to be able to do with that kind of capability. And I think that's why they're so interested in the software to find networks. Great, excellent, great. Dan, thank you so much. Um, thank you everyone for watching. So um, three IBM rack switch products, the um, 8124, the 8264, and the 8316. Thank you everyone. That concludes this edition of the Lipis Report. Thank you for joining us. Look for us every Tuesday and Thursday. To get your free subscription to the Lippus Report newsletter, go to www.lippus.com. To sponsor the Lippus Report podcast, send email to sales at We've got to go, and so do you. See you next time.